end of last year, and they admit how they're targeting black children and black people in general with tobacco. Brother Simron, we just opened next door to you. Tobacco shop. Tobacco shop. Isn't there another one on the other side of us about to open about to? Open. Next door. Pay close attention to this because part of my job is substance abuse prevention. Tobacco retailers have for years been targeting low income neighborhoods with tobacco products. In 2010, Journal of Health Promotion showed tobacco advertisers flooded low income and minority neighborhoods with tobacco products, particularly menthol products because blacks historically, through research, prefer menthol cigarettes. This is a fact. Another cigarette that we like is Cools. And those who know this, what letter does Cool start with? K. K. Is that really how you spell Cool? You know where they got that from? I could give you a whole lecture just on that. They used Miles Davis and Cool in the game to promote tobacco to black people way back in the 70s because they knew that's what we liked. Research shows 80% of smokers start before the age of 18, 80%. Further, research has shown black youth prefer Newport products. Eight out of 10 black youth smokers smoke Newport products. Research has shown 29% of point of sale advertisements in low income neighborhoods and schools are as compared to only 10% in non-white areas. Listen to this, this is beyond my comprehension. Almost 45,000 blacks die each year from smoking caused illnesses. Out of the 1.6 million blacks who smoke under the age of 18 will become regular smokers and about 500,000 of them, I didn't say 500, 500,000 of them will die prematurely from tobacco related illnesses. 500,000, 45,000 a year. So when you heard about Uncle Leroy had congested heart failure, yeah, that's what's on his autopsy. But what caused the congested heart failure? When his arteries got clogged and was filled with plaque, what caused it? A lot of it is tobacco. And no one is talking about it. These places are being erected all over the place and they're being strategically open right in black neighborhoods and by schools. Well, what's the schools about? The foot traffic. Mm -hmm. And they're not carding them. Like Brother Simran said, you can remember back in the day, your mom sent you to uh, the local store, right? to get some bread and something else, and she say, and get me a pack of cigarettes too. Were you carded? Think about it. You, this huck tall, wasn't even carded, giving you cigarettes. So what's the difference today? They ain't carding these children. The difference is they're not getting the cigarettes for themselves. I mean, for the mom and dad, a lot of them are getting the cigarettes for themselves. Talking about the youth. And nicotine is almost more addictive than any other intoxicant that you can think of. It's killing black people and they are deliberately doing it. So I just wanted to put that out there. Now, I hope y'all can see this. Here's the proof. This is a digital map of the tobacco stores. In the middle here is Durham and to the left down here is Chapel Hill. The red dots represent tobacco stores. The blue dots represent schools. Mm. Look at the tobacco stores on top of tobacco stores in the city of Durham. This is all Durham right here. This is where we are right here. This is 147. Look at all these tobacco stores right by schools. Now you go to Chapel Hill in the white areas and Morrisville, the white areas, you don't see nearly as many schools and tobacco stores. That's on purpose. This is their stuff. I will give you the website. It's called Red Flag. They are doing nationwide research. They've done it in eight states. They said it's the same thing everywhere they go. Mm. Everywhere you go, 
you see this influx of tobacco stores and they're right by schools. I can give you the website, you can pull up your county anywhere in North Carolina and you'll see the same thing. It's called counter tools org backslash NC mapping. I'll give it to you and then over here you can put in your your county and it'll give you the map wherever you are and it got it in eight states. It's a deliberate attempt to kill black people and the the tobacco y'all understand this map? Yes sir. Look at this stores on top of stores. There we go. We can go right there on Austin Avenue where Eastway is where I work. It's two three tobacco stores right there. One's called Dorm Convenience Store. Another one's called Easy Something. Right there on Austin Avenue. Right down the street here, Fayetteville Elementary, it's two, three tobacco stores, including Food Line, that sell tobacco. Right there. Go out in white neighborhoods, don't hardly see them. Here, here, here's the proof. Schools, but the tobacco stores aren't on top of them like they are there. This is our youth. These are quotes from tobacco advertisers. Look what they think of you. Leading tobacco quotes about advertising tobacco to blacks and youth. This is them speaking, not me. We don't smoke that sugar honey iced tea. We just sell it. We reserve the right to smoke for the youth, the poor, the black, and the stupid. R.J. Reynolds, tobacco company executive. I have to get their quotes all the time because part of my job is to go to tobacco stores and make sure they're carding. Philip Morris, the first observation is that Marlboro would probably have a difficult time getting anywhere in the young black market. The odds against it are very heavy. Young blacks have found their thing. It's menthol and generally cool in particular. R.J. Reynolds again, since younger black blacks overwhelmingly prefer menthol cigarettes, continued emphasis on Salem within the black market is recommended. Salem is already positioned against younger adults. With emphasis on younger black market, Salem may be able to provide an alternative to Newport and capitalize on Cool's decline. These are the leading tobacco advertisers in America. And this is what they have said. Raise your hand if you have ever seen any of these quotes. This is what they're saying about you. So we don't smoke that sugar honey iced tea. We just sell it but we reserve the right to smoke for you. And then coming up with alternatives to cools. Let you see that map one more time. That's their proof. This is what they're doing to us. So it's unrelated, but it's related because we're talking about our youth. Now we have to create a foundation. What we were talking about, about not having a self-fulfilling prophecy and poisoning the mind of our youth until we get into our head and into their head that there's nothing wrong with our children. The last couple of lectures and workshops I've been doing, this is the slogan, and my brother Emeka has been there and knows I've been pushing this in our children's head. The only thing wrong with our children is their circumstances. There's nothing wrong with our children, but you have to believe that. If you think that they're bad, they're no good, and they're criminals, they're going to start believing that themselves. And we, we might as well not even be here talking about trying to elevate their minds if we don't believe that there's nothing wrong with them, it's only something wrong with them, their circumstances. Does everyone understand that slogan? Yes, sir. Y'all understand that? There's nothing wrong with our children, it's only something wrong with their circumstances. So you're probably thinking, Okay, Brother Sharif, I understand there's nothing wrong with our children. It's only something wrong with their circumstances. Why do you have that nut up there? Let me tell you. And don't get offended. Do you know that even though he is a fic... First of all, who is this? Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Even though he is a fictional figure, do you know his life has many parallels and similarities to many of our lives and many of our children's lives? Yes. Let me explain. Let me explain. Now keep an open mind now. His life, even though he's fictitional, has many similarities and parallels to our lives and the lives of our children. How? 
1977, a movie producer, John Carpenter, came out with Michael Myers. Many of us have probably seen it. They play it all the time on TV. Came out with him. In the movie, he just starts killing people. Kills his sister, right? Kills his sister's boyfriend. The cops come get him, take him to a mental hospital. After 15 years in the mental hospital, he breaks out and he just starts going buck wild and starts killing people, right? Now, no one really knew, like the brother here said, why he started killing like that. 